Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Wise Decision Maker Show, where we help you make the wisest and most profitable decisions. My name is Dr. Gleb Cepurski. I'm the CEO of Disaster Avoidance Experts, the future of work consultancy that sponsors the Wise Decision Maker Show. And today we'll talk about the real obstacle to hybrid work, effective hybrid work, by which I mean both part-time working remotely and full-time working remotely. And that obstacle is productivity paranoia. It's the missing trust factor that's the key here. There was a global survey by Citrix which found that many employers don't trust employees to be productive when they're working remotely or in a hybrid setting. 50% of all business leaders believe that employees don't work as hard when they're out of sight, although this belief is not supported by evidence. Now, productivity paranoia comes from another survey done by Microsoft, which found that 87% of leaders lack confidence in the productivity of their employees when their working employees are working remotely. So this is a really big problem because it's completely not aligned with evidence. When you look at the actual evidence, peer-reviewed research surveys and so on, workers working remotely are more productive. According to a peer-reviewed study, work from home improved productivity by 13% due to fewer sick days, better work environment for people, and resulted in improved work satisfaction and therefore decreased attrition rate by 50%. 50%, that's huge. And that's backed up by other studies. There was a randomized assigned study with a control group in a company called Trip.com, which is a major travel agency, as you can guess by that domain name. So what happened there is that they assigned half of their staff to work a traditional Monday for Friday 9 to 5 schedule. Another half of their staff they assigned to work on a hybrid schedule. And they found that the people who were working part of their time remotely, their work from home reduced their attrition rate by 35%, again, huge number. And people were much more productive overall, specifically programmers who wrote 8% more lines of code, which is a very hard metric of productivity. And there was a study using employee monitoring data from ProScore, which found that the shift to remote work early in the pandemic improved productivity by 5%. Now, here's the benefit. Remote work allows the elimination of the daily commute, which is great because average daily commute is nearly an hour and that's just driving. There's more than an hour when you consider transition times, putting on clothes, taking them off, getting set up with your work computer and so on. University of Chicago research found that 35% of time saved from not commuting is devoted to your primary job. This is a huge reason for this productivity boost. Research also shows that different individuals have different energy levels throughout the day. Some people are morning doves and they have more energy in the morning. They prefer to work at 5 a.m. Some people are night owls. They prefer to work until 9 p.m. from 11 to 9 or something like that. And working at different times can align better with people's productivity and therefore help them be more productive. And we also know that remote work skills improved during the pandemic. So a study at Stanford University found that in the summer of 2020, remote workers were 5% more efficient than their in-office colleagues. But by summer 2022, that improved to 9% because we learned how to do better at remote work. Businesses and governments invested into technology, utilities invested into technology, faster internet, and so on. And now we have to think about what employees actually do in the office. So a report by Workfront found that in-office workers spent only 39% of their workday on their primary activities. The remaining time was spent on non-work-related activities like shopping, checking social media, searching for new positions, especially if required to be in the office full-time. So this relates to FaceTime, where employers, bosses, supervisors have a false measure of productivity. Leaders should really focus on data-driven decisions, but they often deny the data. They ignore the facts, they focus on what feels comfortable to them, and they base their evaluation of performance on what they can see, such as the amount of face time their employees put in, which leads to productivity being assessed based on the amount of time an employee is physically in the office rather than the amount of work that the employee actually gets done. And that, of course, undermines the evaluation of remote employees, even if remote employees are more productive. So the MIT Sloan Management Review reports in a study which found that remote work arrangements were undermined by a focus on in-office presentism. 
even before the pandemic. Remote workers received lower performance evaluations, smaller raises, and less promotions compared to those working in the office for the same amount of productivity. So even if they work just as hard and just as long. That's a huge problem. So the consequence of this false productivity impression will cause traditionalist bosses to lose workers as we're going through the great resignation, whatever names you choose to call it, we have a very high quit rate. The Society for Human Resources survey shows that nearly half of all workers would want to work remotely in their next job, 48%. And the survey shows that workers expect higher salary for non-work-from-home roles. So with a 30-minute commute, half time in the office, so hybrid job, it would require workers to have 10% higher salary. And full-time in the office with that same commute would require 20% higher salary. So we see the value that employees place on not commuting and not being in the office and having more flexibility. So thinking about the rise of hybrid work, there's a likelihood of a recession in the near future. Maybe we're already in a recession, depends on how you count it. It will limit the ability of employers to offer pay raises, leading to a real focus on productivity. So over false gut-based impressions and causing a shift toward more hybrid work and remote work. In order to do that, you really need to address proximity bias, this false belief that in-office workers are more productive. So managers unfairly prefer in-office workers over remote workers. And to address this, managers need to retrain themselves to evaluate performance properly, trusting data over gut-based reactions and having a customized approach to performance evaluations based on what is needed for effective, productive work. Measuring the deliverables. Instead of relying on in-office presence, leaders really need to focus on measuring deliverables frequently and in a clear, quantifiable, objective manner. So research already before the pandemic showed the benefits of transitioning away from those large one-time annual performance evaluations and instead doing brief performance evaluations. For hybrid work, remote work, that's the perfect modality. Once a week, weekly meetings where a team leader meets with their team members. Most good team leaders already have one-on-ones once a week. Now that will just involve a performance evaluation element. So before the weekly meeting, the team members should send a brief report on how they are progressed on their goals for the week, whatever goals they had, problems they experienced, a self-evaluation, and then during the weekly meeting, the team leader and the member will discuss the report and set goals for the next week for the team member to hit. Ideally, you want those goals to be as smart as possible, meaning specific, measurable, actionable, relevant, and timely. So you have them measurable as much as possible. Of course, you can make them qualitative to the extent that they're not going to be able to be made that quantitative, but ideally make them quantitative. So the leader also coaches the member at least, at least one of the goals. He said three to five goals, at least one of the goals, make them quantitative. The leader also coaches the team member on problem solving and approves or revises their self-evaluation, which then is gets fed into a continuous performance evaluation process. There's a big advantage to this continuous evaluation, performance evaluation, because everyone knows where they stand at any moment. So it helps the leader really know who their best performers are and addresses the problems of proximity bias. It allows team members to know where they are, addresses fears over lack of career mobility due to proximity bias, and increases a sense of trust between leaders and employees, which of course improves retention because 75% plus of employees leave because of a poor relationship with their boss first and foremost, according to a Gallup survey. So how do you outcompete the competition in the future of work? To effectively lead in hybrid and remote settings, leaders must challenge their comfort, their personal comfort and discomfort with hybrid work and remote work and evaluating employees in those settings and their bias about doing so. Post-pandemic, I can guarantee to you, leaders who don't adapt will be outcompeted by more fit competitors. To survive and thrive, leaders must be willing to grow and adapt to the new work environments of hybrid and remote work in which we find ourselves. And that's why you really need to address that productivity paranoia to have effective hybrid work productivity and performance evaluation. All right, everyone. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Wise Decision Maker Show. Please make sure to subscribe to the show wherever you check this out and please leave a review. It really helps us improve the show and it helps other people discover the show. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode of the Wise Decision Maker Show. In the meantime, the wisest and most profitable decisions to you, my friends.